Yo, 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 what's up? What's really good? It's your boy Brandon Brave on Towns. We had the podcast yesterday, but today we're going to have that Sports Plus Life talking ish because I got my man Tony on the line. What up, dude? Yo, what's happening? Hey, man, I'm going to tell you what's happening right now is your Dallas Cowboys, man. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, these, these, this this time kind of thing, and this is something that's with every team. When you're when you playing with a backup quarterback, it builds character to win ugly, be able to win ugly, win irregardless, win in other facets of the game, even if the special teams. And um, I just think it builds character. I, I, the D is the D. They got their identity. Um. You know, and so it may be this year is just the year of the Dallas defense. <laughs> it's weird saying that because a couple years ago we was one of them historically bad defenses, but. This is very true. This is very true. Now, you know me. I'm a Cowboys troll. I'm a Cowboys clown. I give credit where credit is due. And not just giving the Cowboys credit, that whole division, with the exception of Washington, and they, and they, they, they're playing like the, uh, the uh, Arena Football League team name that they are. But the Cowboys, the Giants, and the Eagles has made the NFC East arguably the best division in the league. A lot of people think the Giants are playing over their head. A lot of people think uh, – some people think the Cowboys are playing over their head. Um, but results are results. What was your takeaway from the entire week? Well, uh, I, I'll say this. Um you know, looking at things objectively, the NFC East clearly has bettered themselves. Uh, there always was, going, was one bad team in the NFC East, historically anyway. It's right. just the Commanders volunteered this year. Right. Um, when normally it may have been the Giants or somebody else, but they, they volunteered this year. So that, that's kind of my takeaway from that division. I will say this about that, and, and um, Nate Burleson kind of summed it up. When he, was, when he said that, that the Eagles, for instance, he said he tempered the Eagles because in looking at uh, some of their games, they, 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 for half they look like juggernaut, and then the other half they look like you know a, a team that should have lost the game. Um, a lot of Kyle Murray and them didn't start playing to the second half, I don't know. Um, and, and one thing I've learned about the whole NFL as a whole, and this has been this way for three, four years now, in the NBA, free throws are called free for a reason. And there's always these guys like Andre Iguodala that I can hit three-pointers but couldn't hit free throws. Right. Why is it the kickers can't hit extra points, can't hit 30-yard field goals, can't hit 40-yard 40-yard field goals? I mean, these are easy kicks. I would say that particularly, particularly in a control. No, go ahead. If you make the kick, you go to overtime. At the worst, you go to overtime with Philly, Arizona. All you got to do is make a kick. And well, and particularly, I don't disagree with you because you know, a, particularly in a stadium like Arizona, where it's a controlled environment. You know, weather plays no factor. I could see if you were in Chicago or Green Bay or even Philadelphia, where weather can play a factor. That kicker from the Cardinals was god awful. He was yep. horrible. And when you do that in a controlled environment, I mean, I mean, anything that should make you appreciate kickers like Justin Tucker and Brandon McManus that even more, especially Justin Tucker, because that dude is money. I mean, that dude right. is absolute money in any in rain, sleet or snow. It makes you look back on dudes like Janikowski and say, yeah, that dude was, you know, um, and it's I don't I don't get it because it costs it's cost teams so many games this year so far. If you even look at Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, that was all really kickers. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so it, it's it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me. But that's what Nate, Nate Burleson's uh, observation was about that because he said, in essence, that that that, that it should be knotted up four one across the board, except for Washington, of course, in the NFC East. But the, you look at what what where, where was the Detroit Lions' offense this week? They was ghosted. Like they just they did they even show up to play. I know Belichick is a defensive. You know, a uh, uh, guru, but come on, he ain't that damn good. I mean, hey, look, I said yesterday on the podcast, I ain't picking Detroit for shit else. <laughs> I said, goodness gracious. I said, because I jumped on the bandwagon and have been on the bandwagon the last three weeks, and they have let me down. I mean, like, you know, shut out? Like, golly. Yeah, like, I like I agree. Belichick, is he's one of the best defensive minds, but, I mean, goodness gracious. 29 zip? Um, but um, um, what did you think of that sack that that uh, uh, roughing the passer call against Brady in the game against the Falcons? 
Uh, the same thing, I think, that a roughing passer call in our game. The same thing. You, you can't, which you can't, you can't even put your helmet on the shoulder pads now. Like you can't, you can't do nothing to the quarterback. And the same thing happened last night in the Monday Night Football I told, game. I told you my problem, my, uh, Demarcus Ware. As much as I love Demarcus Ware, Demarcus Ware, I felt like was always gentle with the quarterbacks. Like he, you know, sack them, but he like grabbed them and then caressed them gently as he laid them on the turf. <laughs> so little did I know that was a premonition of what the it rules sure will ultimately become. It and sure that's was. literally what the rules are. You can't hit them low, you know, uh, unless you're laying on the ground and you just kind of pull their feet together, then they won't call a penalty on you. But uh, you can't hit them low. You can't hit them high. You can't hit them too hard in the mid. You know, you got to, if you hit them in the mid, you got to make sure you somehow move your helmet away so it don't seem like you speared them. Um, it's like what, and if and then if you drive them, in, if you fall on top of them, that's considered driving them into the ground. Like like what happened last night with Chris Jones on David on Derek Carr. Exactly, exactly. So it's like what you can you play football anymore? Can you play football anymore? And this is well, clearly an overreaction yeah, from yeah, Tua. Week in and week out, week in and week out in every game, but especially on some of the best defensive players in the game. You tell me, how many plays against against uh, the Rams were they holding Michael Parsons, blatantly holding him? And, and, and same thing with the San Francisco Bosa. You know, how many plays was he blatantly being held, but you're just not going to call it? You're just going to swallow that flag, but as soon as he touched the quarterback wrong, they're going to fight 15 yards. But then, but here's the thing, right? But here's the thing. Um, there was a player, uh, Denzel Perriman, sacked um, Patrick Mahomes the exact same way that Grady Jarrett sacked Tom Brady, but there was no flag called. Wow. I mean, I'm telling you, yeah, go, I mean, if you look at the highlights of that game, this was a, a second and goal situation. Denzel Perriman sacked um, Patrick Mahomes the exact same way, twisted him around, didn't go too high, didn't go too low, and there was no flag called. To be honest with you, the Tua hit wasn't a dirty hit. It wasn't. He didn't hit him low. He didn't hit him high. He just got him to the ground, and his head, unfortunately, hit the turf. But it wasn't a helmet-to-helmet contact. You know what I mean? It, and and now the the league is now just clearly going into system overload because everybody was at the NFL's neck. Now, I, you shouldn't have to come at the NFL's neck as much as you come at the Miami Dolphins' neck for allowing him to go out there and play. But I, I thought it was ridiculous. I did. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. The, the calls against Dallas and San Francisco – and uh, Atlanta and uh, Kansas City last night, I thought it was horrible. Particularly that Atlanta one, because that I'm not going to say that cost the Falcons the game, but it was third down. The Falcons would have gotten the ball back, and they had just driven up and down the field the last two drives. I wanted to see what would have happened had Mariota gotten the ball, and the and I, the referees took that away from him. Right. I, I, the referees yeah, took that they, away from him. They, they, yeah, it's called the no fun league for a reason, but it's also the the lack of consistency that's a huge and the make it up on the fly league. But as far as the league goes, sir, you got um you got nine right, which was tied for second with me. David, Marcus, and Marquise got ten. So that was that was a good week. You had a really you had a really good week. Now, I do want to get your picks because there's a couple a couple of quick questions that I would like to ask you and get your opinion on. Certain questions I only ask you because I like to pick your brain more really than anybody else. But let's go ahead and get to these picks. The first game of the week, Thursday night, awful game, um, Washington at Chicago. Bears. Bears. Okay, no problem. Now the Sunday's game, San Francisco at Atlanta. Ooh, I'm gonna say the the, the Dirty Niners, the, the Dirty Niners, Atlanta. And, and and by the way, the now first Atlanta quarter, could easily win that game. They but could. Atlanta's up. playing a lot better than I think what anybody had anticipated this season. And I yeah, think I think I think actually I think actually the Falcons may have may have gotten more impressive votes in that loss to Tampa Bay because that pass interference call was so bogus and because they came back. You know, when it was 21 to nothing, we were like, yeah, well, Tom Brady beats the Falcons. And then they came back and we're like, whoa, maybe this Atlanta team got something that, that we haven't seen. 
But um, I, I I picked the Niners as well. The the now first place San Francisco 49ers. Um, New England at Cleveland. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say the Patriots kind of found something. Cleveland is kind of up, down, all over the place because I actually expected more than, uh, against the Chargers. So I did too. So, yeah, yeah, I'm going to pick against them this week. The only thing i say about um, Cleveland is, you know, would you agree with me as of saying right now they have the best running back in football? Um, I would say they have the rest, best running game. I don't know if they got the best running back. They got the best running game in football. Okay, fair enough. The New York Jets are three and two, Tony. <laughs> yeah, they did the they, J E T S Jet. They are. They, what a time to be a football fan in New York. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. The Jets play. The Jets, the Jets and the Mets getting it right. A little well, bit. Yeah. well, no, the Mets just got eliminated. It's a Yankee yeah. town, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Yankee town, goddammit. But um, but the Jets and the Giants, they're getting it. And the Jets have to go to Lambeau Field to play the Packers. Who you got? Uh, I'm going to say the Packers don't write that ship this week. The Jets are still playing above their heads. They're punching above their weight. So I'm going to say that you're not going to get that that kind of Packers team two weeks in a row. So, yeah. Okay. Jacksonville at Indianapolis. Uh, Jaguars let me down. They, they, yeah, they, they let me down, they, too. They, they, like, they like the Jets, too, you know. So, uh, I'm going pick, to get pick against them this week. All right. Um, Minnesota at Miami. Has that Miami train kind of been derailed a little bit? It has. So, that's the reason why I'm going to take the Vikings. Yeah, I took the Vikings, too. Cincinnati at New Orleans. Now, think of this storyline before you make your pick. I got it, but I'm taking the Saints. <laughs> okay. The Saints D is still, is still playing football. They and are. Well, they are. Cincinnati O-line can, can protect adequately. That Saints D will do. And all, and all, uh, and all that the, the Saints O got to do is put enough points and not lose the game. Do you think uh, Andy Dalton is a better fit, fit for that offense than Jameis? I do. I do, too, actually. I do. I do too. The Baltimore Ravens at the four and one New York Football Giants. Ravens, Ravens, Ravens gonna win that one. Uh, I'm gonna win that. The, the, believe it or not, the Giants beat the Packers, but the Giants had a lot of fortunate things fall in their favor. They're still they are punching above their weight. I, I uh, pick the Ravens thing, as well. Here's the thing: the strength of the the New York Giants right now is running, not not passing. I was it just was getting ready to say them. that. I Give was them just a better g- chance against them Ravens because the Ravens secondary is horrible. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that. Um, um, I um, I'm enjoying watching the return of Saquon Barkley. I must say, I picked the Ravens to win too, but I'm enjoying Saquon Barkley. He, but you know what? You know what it is with the Giants. It's not. It's it, it, okay. Saquon is having a good year, but why is Saquon? Because they're sticking with the run, and eventually he breaks a big one, and then that, and then his stats, you know, jump up significantly. Every game he's had had big yards. It's one big run. It's one fifty, sixty yard run because they're staying with the run. Whereas in the past they would run, run. He gets stuff. He gets stuff. He gets stuff, and then they just give up again. You know, give up the run altogether. Well, um, um, hey, I mean, the, what, I think what Brian Dayball has done is you found the strength of your team and you're continuing to stick with your strength. It's like what Sariani did last year with the Eagles. You realize the strength of your team was running the ball and you're going to stick your, you're sticking with it. And it's winning you games. And they do have a tough defense. Oh, and quiet is kept. This is the difference with Dak on the sideline. They stick with the run. They've been sticking with the run. Well, that's not quiet anymore. That secret's out. Because this, the, what y'all are doing, y'all, this is the remedy that y'all did in 2016. It, the, that secret is out now. And for those idiots that, yeah, they need to play, they need to start Pollard. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. When when Zeke is in the game, yeah, you can run the ball, but pass protection becomes completely different with them two dudes when they switch out. They teams know Pollard can't block nothing. He has no vision in that backfield, and they will send a cornerback, anybody. They send the water boy to go sack the quarterback because Pollard can't block him. <laughs> you're saying you could send your you could send Zeke to chip out Aaron Donald, and he could do an effective job chipping Aaron Donald. But he's going to see the blitz coming because that was his that was his bell cow in college, best blocking running back in the game. 
Yeah, he he's was. almost like having a, another offensive lineman in there. And if you're not trying to get your quarterback killed, you have Zeke in there on obvious passing plays, right? Obvious. So the next game, uh, Tampa Bay at Pittsburgh. Uh, Buccaneers. Yeah, uh, Pitt, this is a long season for Pittsburgh. Um, Carolina at the Rams. You know the Panthers just fired their coach. I do. I do. And for that reason, I'm picking the Panthers. Why? Because these are, these games are always the games that these teams rally up. Upset that, special. And Carolina's front is enough to get, get to get to Stafford. Or could it be that Baker Mayfield will not be playing this game as well? It could be. But until that happens, I'm picking the Panthers. Okay. Arizona at Seattle. Speaking of playing over their head, Geno Smith? Yeah, see, for that reason, I'm kind of scared of this game. But but, but I feel like Arizona got to play up to the potential at some point, and this is a good game to do that. All right. So I will pick the Cardinals. Big game in the AFC. Buffalo at the Kansas City Chiefs. Hands down, Bills. Bills, Bills, Bills. I picked the Bills, Bills. as well. Yeah. Sunday night football, Dallas at Philly. I already know who you picking. Yeah, you 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 know. You already know. You already know. I will say this about that game, though. So it's going to be a test of wills um, in, in terms of in the trenches because Philly thinks they're a running team now. Well, we stopped the run. We're pretty good at stopping the run. So we shall see. I, 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 just, I hope Hurts drops back and passes. Okay. I hope he. I hope he decides he wants to pass Sunday night because then we'll get to see the old Jalen Hurts because he when he hit them footsteps, you know what he does. Okay, we shall see. We shall see. Now Monday night football, my Denver Broncos at the Chargers. I pick the Chargers. My offense yeah, is Chargers horrible. Chargers gonna smoke y'all, man. Chargers gonna smoke y'all because y'all can't. Your, your defense does what your defense does. I've watched your team. Throughout this season, and the defense, you can't look at them. You cannot point the finger at. No, you cannot. The defense looks amazing. I mean, we've we two of our five, two of our five games, we have not given up a touchdown. And what's up with Russell? I, I mean, that that I, that investment has not aged well. Y'all mm-hmm. might have been better. And the Drew Lock was not the answer, but y'all might have been better looking at some of these other. Y'all might hell. Y'all might have been better with somebody like. Mariota, for real. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is he, he looks he looks bad. I don't know if you listened to the podcast yesterday. I started off going going just simply ballistic on my Broncos because this is horrible, and you cannot point it at the defense. Russell Wilson has looked. Now he's saying he has a, a torn muscle in his shoulder. I'm like, okay, well then sit out. Don't come in. Don't play and play like shit because this is horrible. I mean, he he's the reason we lost to the Colts on Thursday night. Him. Yep. He is the primary reason that we lost that game to the Colts, and it's it's just been ridiculous. Two hundred fifty million dollars for that bullshit? Oh my goodness! I mean, right now we look better uh, last year with Teddy Bridgewater. To be honest with you. Yep. So okay, Tony's picks are as followed. Uh, he has the Bears, the 49ers, the Patriots, the Packers, the Colts. The Minnesota Vikings, the Saints, the Ravens, the Buccaneers, the Panthers, the Cardinals, Buffalo Bills, Cowboys, and Rams. Does that sound about right, sir? That sounds about. Oh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, who, who was the Rams? The Rams was Rams in Atlanta, right? Yeah. It was Rams in Carolina. No, you know, yeah, the Rams in Carolina. I said Carolina. Yeah, no, I took, no, I took the Panthers. I took the Panthers and, and said less. You know, uh, I said Carolina, didn't I? <laughs> No, no, you said Rams. Oh, well, I, I have you written down as having Carolina. I have maybe I mis- no. mistook the Rams yeah, for the no. Chargers. No, yeah, I have you down as picking Carolina. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I have you down as picking Carolina. Um, now what I wanted to, I meant to ask you this a couple weeks ago because we haven't talked about this. Brett Favre, what do you say? Um, I think if he knew, and and I think his ass should go to jail. Um, uh, Brett Favre always did was a scumbag. Like Brett Favre, so nothing with him kind of surprised me. He was a, he's a low key sleazeball. We find out a lot of these people and once they leave the game that they're sleazeball. Here looking at you, Tuberville. Um, <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Yeah, those black players. I wonder how they feel about you now, Coach. Um, but uh, it doesn't surprise me. Like it doesn't surprise me. People it, it, when when Brett Favre was playing, he, he it, it's. It's like Aaron Rodgers playing right right now. Yeah, if I know Aaron Rodgers low key is a scumbag, he has scumbag element to him. 
So it's, it's not surprising. You know what I'm saying? If it's true, then it's not surprising. If it's not true, it's not surprising that he knew and turned a blind eye. You know? They didn't so, found too many. They didn't found too many text messages. Clearly, it's true. You ain't heard about right. the text message that was found. You know, well, if we take this money, will the media find out? And all of that other stuff. He, his text message, his text messages has incriminated himself. Right. Yeah. So I think that 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 is a, as with anybody that has any money that's in a situation like that, he's probably going to going to skate, you know, uh, with a slap on the hand, a slap on the wrist. But you know, my feeling is treat him the same way you treat anybody else. You know. Right, and that's that, bad. And, and that and that particular thing is offense is, is particularly bad, man, because people is need and need and this that, and the other, and you you, you know you you stealing from the poor to get to the rich, the reverse Robin Hood. Exactly, Come on now. exactly. That's exactly what it is. You're you're stealing from the poor to give to privileged kids who already were rich. Yep. Um and um Draymond Green switched to basketball quickly. I know you've seen that video of where he rocked Jordan Poole. I said what I said, and it's the same element. Draymond Green, everybody know Draymond Green got scumbag element written all over him. Now, you you jaw-jacking him, and, 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 and they were going to handle this. Golden State was carrying this one way until that TMZ video dropped out there where everybody could see how that thing really went down. You know, you jawjacking with a young player and this, that, and the other. And right now, Draymond, you know, you'd have to say Jordan Poole on on, on some level, you know, is either at least equal to you as a player, you know, contribution-wise to that team. Your defense, he's offense. But at the same time, you know, nothing he could have said to you would have warranted you walking up and sucker punching him, you know, like that. Now, <laughs> if you're Jordan Poole, what do you – how do you approach that going forward? You approach that the same way you approach Tony Kukoc uh, and Bobby Portis. Now, you know, that shook out and it was not in favor of the Bulls the way it shook out. But at the end of the day, Tony Kukoc said, I want out. You know what I mean? I want out as an organization. If you're not going to handle this the proper way, then I want out. And that's what I would do. Jordan Poole is due for a huge payday oh, yeah. and get elsewhere. So I would, I would bounce. I would say it's either me or him. Um, me, a, me as a as, stay there. me as an athlete and a prideful human being, I think me and Draymond will be tussling every damn day until further notice. Like, bro, I'm waiting. Well, like, well, well, believe it or not, that kind of was the stance with Portis and Kukos, where where it was like we we can't be in the same place. Kukos said, "I can't be in the same place as them. Otherwise, it's it's just gonna be this." So yeah, and fool, I would say either trade me now or or release me something. Whatever we can do to get me up out of here, sign and trade now. Otherwise, every day I'm going to come in here, if I come in. But every day, I'm, I'm going to come in here so I don't get fined. But every day, it's going to be this. I'm going to come in, I'm going to go straight grab a steel chair and start swinging at it. <laughs> yeah, man, bro. I'm, I'm waiting at your car. I'm waiting at the locker room. I mean, for real. like, and Because now the tape is leaked. That's forever. That is out there forever. And, you and, know, anytime Jordan Poole has a problem with anybody, they going to throw that shit in his face. And, oh, you ain't deal with Draymond like that. You know, like. Somebody about that very thing, a Golden State fan, he said, well, what about Jordan hitting Steve Kerr? I said, uh, we wasn't in the era of social media, so if you ain't see it, it ain't happening. But I bet you there's a whole lot of situations. We know the stories of that happening, you know, everywhere. Whether it's, whether it's football, basketball, whatever, we know. Yeah, Shaquille you know, O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, uh, but that looked particularly bad because, again, it's almost like he walked from, you know, one side of the court to the other, Jack joined the whole way, Jack joined the whole way, one up and bump him in the chest, and then, next, you know, you want to sucker punch the man. You know, it, it, again, what was he saying that was so bad that you want to sucker punch him? Draymond, you the, you the, you the, how long has Draymond been in the league? Oh, he's been in the league since 2010. Yeah, veteran, and then you letting this young guy get in your head, get in your head. This is how we know that Draymond is mentally weak and that Rodman would have had him all over the place. If you letting Jordan Poole get you, I bent out and say, what would Rodman have done to you? Oh, my God. Well, for one thing, I know Rodman would have punched him back. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 Rodman would have fought, what, would have fought him straight up. <laughs> I, don't think, um, Rodman, I don't think Rodman wouldn't have let him get that close without him putting his hands up. That too. That too. Rodman would have fought him, and all of a sudden, Hulk Hogan would have came at the end of the, <laughs> came out the crowd, and 
Don't, don't leave me. <laughs> Bill Lambeer would have ran out the crowd. It's a Rodman thing. A lot of players back then wouldn't have been, a, you know, they would not have let him approach them like that. They, their hands would have been up in Absolutely. Charles, Charles Oakley. Yeah, Oakley. But I, bet, but, I bet you, but I bet you J. Mine Green wouldn't have did some shit like that to say somebody like Anthony Mason. Hell no. Uh, what? <laughs> Hell no. No way. Anthony Mason, uh, Xavier McDaniel, um, no way. Rick Mahorn, Daniel, hell no. Daniel, it, it, hell no. Absolutely Dale not. Dale Davis, no Kevin Willis. Oh, no, no way. You ain't talk, no Dale Davis either. <laughs> no, because no, they would have cracked him right back across his head. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you mean, come on, Draymond, and Draymond's one of my favorite players. But pick on somebody your own size, man. Well, he couldn't have did that shit to like Kevin McHale, you know? No, they, no way. Would not have, they would have fought. Yeah, he wouldn't. He 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 wouldn't have done that to uh, Birdman Anderson. Yeah, no, no, definitely not, Chris. No, yeah, no. Yeah, that, oh, motherfucker, that, motherfucker, that motherfucker been been, been, been glowing. That motherfucker was crazy. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. Uh-uh. <laughs> It's just, and I, and I don't want to put, you know, say Jordan Poole is a lesser, you know, guy, but he is a slight guy. It's a big size difference between him and Draymond. Big size and, difference. And you could clearly tell he wasn't expecting. You're not expecting a teammate to hit you like that. So, well, when he he's put, not well, in defensive mode. Well, look, man, well, look, well, this is what I would say to Jordan Poole. If you think, if, if you think you pushing somebody is going to be the end of it, you just found out the hard way. Well, what I'll say is you got to you got to consider the source. Yeah, I mean, if it's when you look at some of these guys, some of these guys grew up, they came up in the hood, so yeah, their hands are gonna be up. Some of these guys actually grew up in suburbia and went to prep school. Yeah, so they mm-hmm. they not they don't you know they're not gonna react the same way. I like I promise you, if somebody roll up, if somebody would have roll up on Steph Curry like that, yeah, he would have got sucker punched too because he came from Silver Spoon. Oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah. You know. So it, it is. You got to consider the source. That's that's all I'm saying. Consider the source. All right. Um, then, you know. All right. Well, sir, um, we got your picks. We got your take. Um, any pardon shots? Um, no, nah, not really. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. NBA is, you know, doing what NBA does, and we'll see how that how how that goes. Um, I will say this: I, I did keep the key Cleveland Cavaliers, and my observation was 100 percent correct. You got too many ball handlers. You got too many dudes that, that have to have that ball to be as effective. Yeah, now the scoring, if you look at the box sheet, the scoring was balanced. But the problem was at crucial points in that game, who was taking, who, 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 who won, wanted the ball, who felt like they should have the ball, and what everybody else was doing when that person did have the ball. When Donovan Mitchell had that ball, no one was doing anything except for the guys that normally would get a pass anyway. They were moving, but everybody else that's used to handling that ball, no. They weren't doing anything. The Karis LeBert and, and, and Garrett Darius Garland didn't know what to do because you don't have the ball. You're used to having the ball. You're a guard. You're a point guard. You're used to having the ball. Okay. All right. Well, we, we shall. I mean, well, you know. It's, around watching your other teammates move around in the offense, and it, it, it showed. Okay. Well, listen, I'm about to stop this and load this up. Stay on the line, okay? All right, and again, this is Sports Plus Life Talking Ish. I see you on Monday with another uh, Sports Plus Life Prediction League Monday. Peace. We out this bitch.